In society, men and women are depicted in a very narrow, limiting way. And I think it does a disservice to the vast array of differences that actually gender has. There is a binary, but there's a whole lot in between. When people look at me, they don't necessarily know if I'm a man or a woman from first glance, and to me, that's being butch. Butch is sort of like my most comfortable, most confident, most capable kind of identity. So this is what I am naturally, really. Masculinity is not the sole domain of men. There have been masculine women throughout history. There have been feminine men throughout history. Dressing the way I do, looking the way I do, being a bearded lady the way I am does not um, make me any less female. Butch, not like the other girls, is an exploration of masculine women. My main objective was starting the Butch Project, was to add to the conversation about what it means to be a man and a woman, what it means to be masculine or feminine. I'm an activist in, in my work as an artist. I consider my work to be activism. And I wanted to show butches as we see them. You know, in many marginalized communities, we take back words that were used to, to hurt us. Queer, dyke, and butch is one of those words. I would like to redefine what we think of as beautiful. I am seen out in the hegemonic uh, society, the, uh, the, the way things are, as um, an ugly woman. But if you see me as a man, I'm seen as very handsome. Why is that? And why does it matter? I shot almost 100 people. A few people told me that it really, really changed their life, that they were feeling horrible about themselves. Because again, we get so bombarded with messages that we're so not okay. The Butch Project um, started, like many a project, around a kitchen table. I had some femme friends uh, who were bemoaning where have all the butches gone as only femmes can do. And I said, we're here, we've always been here, we'll always be here, and I've actually been thinking about doing a project. And um, my wife said, all right then, you know, let's get on it. I was hoping that young butches especially, but all butches or masculine of center women would um, feel the way my wife Catherine made me feel, which was disastrously handsome. I met Catherine actually 10 years before we got together. We were both attached um, at, that, at the times that we met, but it was very clear that there was something important there. I really believe you only need really one person to really, really believe in you, like absolutely believe in you. <clears throat> and Catherine did. She thought we didn't get enough love. She wanted all the masculine women to feel loved up. When she died, everything was very <clears throat> black for a long time for a very long time. Catherine was the most joyous person you could ever meet. And if you met her, you would, everybody who met her just felt completely seen. So I, I stopped um, 
the Butch Project and started again a couple of years later. I don't really know. It's a little, um, it's a little bit fuzzy. I was able to do that by thinking of doing it for Catherine because she would want me to do it. But I was pleased that um, I continued and persevered through it. When I was shooting people, um, I, I talked about Catherine all the time. I talked about her <clears throat> in the shoots. I think um, to be a, a good portrait photographer that you have to be in love with some part of that person. And, um, you know, I will, I'll do pretty much anything to get them to show that part of themselves to me. My family and I, we moved to Canada when I was about nine years old. And even growing up in Japan, I gravitated towards other boys, uh, playing with boys. I just thought that I was supposed to be a boy or like a boy. And also, I felt like boys have more fun. I think uh, as a mixed race family in Japan, my mother's white and my father's Japanese, I was used to being different. Um, even though we grew up in Japan and, and we, we were different. Like at that time, you, you looked around and there was nobody else. This was like the late 60s, early 70s. Really, like we really stood out. So I was used to being different. My mother, uh, who's of European descent, was like, quite validating and she knew, I think, how I was or something. And so she never gave me a hard time or, or, or you know, punished me or anything like that. That allowed me to see the difference between like societal pressures and, and what could be um, and helped me along really to uh, not be pretending necessarily. I was just very naturally masculine, so you know, they call that tomboy, and I would be mistaken for a boy all the time. I wanted to have short hair and play rough and just follow, play, do the stuff that the boys did. And then when puberty comes, the teenage years, then, there's, then that pressure comes in, and it was time for the long hair and maybe some makeup and wear women's clothing, and that's where the pressure really affects you in, how, in the choices you make, because you want to be like your friends. You don't want people to think you're weird. The process of going through a phase of femininity uh, allowed me to discover that that's not really who I am and as I grew up then I was able to discover what is most comfortable and who I am and that's in a more masculine expression. Identities shift and move throughout our lives. We're not, uh, we're not static beings necessarily but I do have a very cl clear picture of myself as an eight-year-old and um, I had really wild crazy hair and my mother used to cut it really short because it was completely impossible. And I was a tomboy, I've been a tomboy my whole life. And I remember going in, there's a little grease monkey, skinny little grease monkey into a shop, a uh, bicycle shop, and them calling me a boy. And me being really mad and saying, I'm not a boy, I'm a girl. And I look back at that little stuff and I'm like, well, I think you looked like a boy. <laughs> Um, so, I guess I must have had a, quite a sense of myself, even then. I was, you know, I was encouraged to become, you know, a policeman or a firefighter or a carpenter, and nothing wrong with any of those professions, but I really, as I look back, I think I was always an artist. This is uneven. I just noticed this. The middle one? I came out um, into the queer community at a time when um, uh, Butch Femme was completely in the 80s, when it was completely on the outs. You were, it was not, it was being, being masculine was, you know, part of the patriarchy. I was feeling quite isolated as an artist, so um, I went and I uh, joined the collective, at that time it was a collective, uh, Pride in Art. And so we spearheaded uh, making it a not-for-profit, uh, making it a festival, rebranding as the Queer Arts Festival. And now we have a party! 
I think we've opened up a really um, important space, wedge, if you will, in the city uh, for art. You know, we say it's uh, the Queer Arts Festival is celebrating queer artists and art. So a queer artist could be um, doing something that do it doesn't have to be about their identity. I didn't know exactly what I was getting into when I walked into the studio, but yeah, afterwards I felt great. This spot seems to be good. I felt celebrated, actually, uh, after the photo shoot. And also, uh, particularly after the book came out and there was an exhibit in the bus shelters, it was almost like, wow, everything was amplified as like, here we are, and uh, this is us, and we're all different in, in our own butch ways. When people are experiencing their lives, they may not have someone like me in their circle of people. And it allows people to, to look at us and to not have to politely look away or something because they're uncomfortable. You can continue doing it, but just at the end, just like sort of slow-mo. I think anytime you can see images that reflect how you feel and, and who you think you are, helps you to be comfortable uh, with expressing yourself naturally. Beauty is not like one way, especially with gender expression. And like there's so much beauty in that book with all the variation of different kinds of expression of butch. So that's, that's what I hope that people will get out of it, that, that um, you don't have to be a certain way. I would say especially, you know, for women who feel bad about themselves. They're not pretty enough, you know. We get bombarded with those messages all the time. We're not feminine enough. We're not masculine enough. I think that beauty is different for everyone. I think we need to shatter those stereotypes and those rules um, because it'll make us better humans.